When I was trying to become healthier and lose weight, if you would have told me I could not have dessert, I would have said, all right, that's it, I'm out. I'd rather be unhealthy eating dessert than be healthy and never have something sweet. Now granted, I'm not eating like Snickers bars and Ben and Jerry's ice cream, but I do like to end my night on something sweet, and these desserts definitely do that. Starting with homemade Oreos. I'll put the cookie ingredients and cream ingredients on the screen. To start, add 144 grams of coconut flour, 50 grams baking cacao powder, 3 quarters teaspoon of salt, and a half teaspoon of baking powder in a bowl. Whisk together until they're fully combined, then set this aside while we make our wet ingredients. Take 80 grams of room temperature butter and mix it for one to two minutes. Add 100 grams of monk fruit sweetener to the butter bowl and mix it thoroughly for three to five minutes. Add an egg, mix it mixy. Pour in half the coconut flour, cacao, salt, baking powder mixture and mix on low before adding in the other half of our dry ingredients. Again, mix on low. Wrap this dough in saran wrap and put it in the fridge for at least an hour. In the meantime, to make the vanilla cream, weigh out 70 grams of butter, 70 grams of monk fruit sweetener, a teaspoon vanilla extract, and a dash of salt. Mix it on up until it's smooth like cream. Take the dough out of the fridge, roll it out in between two pieces of parchment paper, and then I used a champagne glass to bust out Oreo circles out of my dough. Now granted y'all, I made this like four years ago during COVID times, and frankly, I don't have the time for this, but it was something fun to try at the time, and these will definitely be the cleanest ingredient Oreos you'll ever eat. Once I had all of my little Oreo cookies, I put them in the freezer for 15 minutes, preheated my oven to 350 degrees, put my cookies on some trays, bake for 10 to 12 minutes. You'll wanna keep an eye on them since they are a dark color, so it's hard to know when they're fully done, but you'll wanna push the cook time so that way they have more of a crunch like an Oreo. Allow the cookies to cool on a cooling rack for about an hour before adding in your cream. They were rather delicious, but like you saw, it did take a few hours to make. And so what my main form of dessert was when I was losing weight were these keto chocolates. At the time I got them from Costco, though someone this week sent me a picture of these guys, the Choc Exo Dark Chocolate Coconut Cups, and the ingredients weren't terrible. And I did see that you can buy them on Amazon. Now a few things with these chocolates. Firstly, they're going to be the worst option of dessert I show throughout this video. Again, I did lose weight eating these dark chocolates, though with what I know now, I wish I would have chose a pure dark chocolate bar like the ones on the screen, as these dark chocolates have some added ingredients that really aren't necessary. The other thing, and this is my disclaimer throughout the entirety of this video, I am a moderator. I can have one serving, or one bite and be completely satisfied, but there's many people who they can't just have one cookie, they're gonna have the whole tray. I had one Oreo cookie, one chocolate square, and my goal is to help you lose weight and feel great so I can provide healthier dessert options, but then you have to know yourself. Are you a moderator or are you an abstainer? Because with these desserts, I'm recommending, you know, one or a serving. I'm not saying eat the whole tray because that's not gonna help someone with weight loss or with health in general. Actually, there is one dessert I'll show that you could hypothetically binge eat and be okay. But everything else is like, you know, one serving, please. Here's my thoughts on dessert and stevia in general. It's if we're eating healthy whole foods throughout the day, exercising, getting sunshine, getting good sleep, finding ways to lower stress, maybe using a sauna or doing infrared, wearing blue light blocking glasses, getting out in nature, connecting with family. Of course, we don't have to do all of these things, but if we can honestly say to ourselves that we're taking care of our bodies and we earned a little dessert, then if we have one chocolate or one cookie, it shouldn't be that big of a deal for most people. Now granted, if someone has a very severe autoimmune condition and they have that one piece of something, it may be very catastrophic for that person. But in general, for most people, if you're doing the healthy good things 95% of the time, then I'm not gonna lose sleep over that small 5%. I used to eat a lot of dessert every night and throughout the day. And so for me to say, I'm only gonna have one chocolate and then to only eat the one chocolate was a really good first step in the right direction for me. I got in the habit of just having that one piece of chocolate for dessert. And then I said, okay, cool. Let's try to have just half a chocolate at night for dessert. And then after I got really good at doing that, I said, okay, how about a quarter of a chocolate? How about a chocolate every other day? How about just one time a week? So I slowly weaned off of these 
fancier desserts, where this nowadays is my actual dessert. I'll have a cup of yogurt and a piece of fruit. I'm always sure to peel my fruits, even organic fruits, because, I mean, I've got trust issues and I don't know who poked, sprayed, coated, or handled my fruits, so I just peel them. My yogurt is raw A2 yogurt from my local farmer, though I'll throw a couple good ones on the screen that I've seen at the grocery stores. I do rotate my fruits, though lately I've been having blueberries and dark cherries. If I ever have an apple, I'm not opposed to having some Ceylon cinnamon or even a little balsamic vinegar drizzle. Sometimes if my husband and I are feeling really fancy, we'll throw in a scoop of protein powder. <sighs> Killer. You'll see a couple more of these desserts do require electrolytes. Now, you don't have to use the specific brand that I do, but I like this one because it doesn't have any sugar or nasty ingredients, and it does have the science-backed ratios of sodium, magnesium, and potassium to help with hydration. It's called Element, but for this next recipe, you will need some electrolytes. It's a super simple recipe for popsicles and fudgesicles. I just put water in a shaker cup, throw in either Element's watermelon or raspberry electrolytes, mix it up, pour it in popsicle molds. I even added some blueberries to this one. After putting it in the freezer, boom, you've got yourself some healthy popsicles. Now these popsicles do come out popsicle-y, whereas I have made fudgesicles before where I've used milk and mixed in the chocolate element packet and then had more of a creamy milky fudgesicle. The sky's the limit with popsicles. And I will leave links to recipes in the description. There will also be a link to Element Electrolytes where you can get eight additional free packets of Element with your order, or you can get those eight additional free packets by going to the URL drinkelement.com slash lilycane. The next dessert is Butter Brittle. I know this may sound nasty because to me, when I first heard about it, I was like, ooh, that sounds kind of gross. But this is probably the best dessert on this video. I mean, other than my yogurt and piece of fruit. Take butter, put it in your pan, Continue to stir and mix on low heat until the butter starts to brown. Once the melted butter is nice and brown, throw it in a container. This next step is optional, but highly recommended. Throw some bacon pieces on top. Put it in the freezer for a couple hours, and out comes this glorious, nutty, savory, salty, caramely, delicious thing. You would think it tastes like butter, but it is salty, caramely, peanut brittly, nutty. It's surprisingly deadly delicious. Now this is the dessert that could be binge eaten. Jello. I used three teaspoons grass-fed beef gelatin, poured half a cup of cold water over the powder and let it sit for five minutes to allow the gelatin to bloom. Then I poured in one and a half cups hot water with six grams of electrolyte powder. I used watermelon and stirred it for two minutes. I then poured the mixture into a glass container and refrigerated it for three hours. The whole recipe is 40 calories, so even if you ate this whole tray times five, it's still less calories than like all of these other desserts. And it's hydrating. Next dessert, homemade ice cream. Using one pint milk or heavy cream, three egg yolks, one scoop protein powder. I used vanilla, so it came out like vanilla ice cream, but you could do chocolate protein powder, or if you wanted to make your ice cream sweeter, you could add in some honey or maple syrup. Or if you wanted more of a coffee tasting ice cream, you could put a little bit of coffee inside. You simply mix the ingredients in an ice cream maker, or if you don't have an ice cream maker, you could do it the old fashioned way, I've done this before, where I poured my mixture into my glass container, and then to make the ice cream creamier and to prevent it from getting icy, after putting that mixture into the freezer, I would take it out after 30 minutes and then stir it for a little bit, put it back into the freezer for 30 minutes, took it out, gave it another stir, put it back into the freezer, and I continued this process until the ice cream was frozen. I've also made a version of ice cream with yogurt and strawberries blended together, but honestly using heavy cream or milk with a few egg yolks definitely makes the ice cream come out more creamy. Last dessert is brownies, though I'm making these ones dark cherry brownies. If you don't have dark cherries, don't worry about it. Just use the same recipe without the dark cherries and it will work. I used beef flour, but I'm sure coconut flour works too. Using six teaspoons beef flour, a quarter teaspoon stevia, three teaspoons cocoa powder, two tablespoons melted butter, an egg, and 60 grams of dark cherries, mix these ingredients together, and then put it in your brownie tray, or in my case, a muffin tin, and then bake in the oven at 350 degrees for 15 minutes. Got that yummy, yum, that yummy, yum, that yummy, yummy. If you have any healthy dessert recipes, please leave it in the comment section. I would love to try them and I'm sure other people would like them as well. Don't be silly, subscribe to Lily, and I'll see you in the next one.